it's Angela from the blog AngelaMarieMade.com. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited because Brenda and I are going to be giving our master bedroom a major makeover and here's why. Our master bedroom is the room I'm most embarrassed about and it has been a hodgepodge of furniture and decor for several years. With my IKEA furniture from college, plastic drawers for Brandon's nightstand, no sense of style, lots of clutter, and nothing hanging on the walls. It's the room makeover that always got pushed aside for another project. We even bought a brand new king mattress and box spring two years ago with the intention of building a beautiful new bed frame for it shortly after. Well, here we are two years later and we are still sleeping on the floor on our king mattress and box spring. When we moved into our home a few years ago, the pink color in the bedroom was a dingy yellow beige color and the ceiling was covered in popcorn ceiling. I can't stand either of those two things and I'm ready to refresh it. Finally, it's time to give this room a much deserved transformation. The style I'm going for in this space is sophisticated, classic, and modern mixed with cozy rustic vibes. We're going to remove the popcorn ceiling on the angled walls, add some drama with a black accent wall, and paint the other three remaining walls a fresh white color. I'm also going to add touches of brass and wood elements mixed with lots of cozy textures through the furniture and decor. If you've been following me on Instagram or my other videos here on the channel lately, we've made progress with a few of the projects like our DIY nightstands and dresser makeover, but now it's time to do the full extreme bedroom makeover process and I'm really excited about it. So let's get started with this bedroom makeover. First we started off by removing the ugly popcorn ceiling on the angled walls. I can't stand popcorn ceiling, and if you saw our kitchen makeover video, then you know we've removed entire ceilings of this stuff in our home. To save time though on this makeover, we just did the angled ceilings where it was the most noticeable. We started by moving our furniture out of the way and taping plastic up with painter's tape because the stuff goes everywhere. Then Brandon used a weed sprayer and sprayed water on the ceiling and sections. And then scraped with a drywall taping knife into a bucket to catch most of it. Then we removed all of the plastic. The next project we tackled was painting the bedroom walls, trim, and doors. One of the easiest ways to transform a room is with paint. For three of the walls, we went with a fresh white paint color. It's so important to test paint colors out in your actual space because the lighting and colors can vary so much. I tested out Alabaster by Sherwin-Williams and White Dove by Benjamin Moore. Alabaster looked way too yellow, so I went with White Dove in eggshell, which gave me that fresh white look that I wanted. For our black accent wall, I tested out four different black paint colors. One way to help narrow down multiple paint colors is to add a sample of your trim paint color next to the paint swatches and see how it looks compared to the trim color rather than the existing paint color on the wall. I couldn't decide what black paint color I liked best, so I decided to wait a day or two so I could see how the samples looked at different times of day with different lighting. In the meantime, we started with painting our doors and trim. The first step before painting trim is to vacuum all of the dust and dirt off the baseboards and remove the outlet covers, doorknobs, and any other hardware on the walls. Step two is to prep your paint by putting a drop cloth down in front of the wall and under your paint station where your paint tray and supplies will go. For the walls, start by cutting along the baseboards, doors, windows, outlets, and the ceiling using a paintbrush. After the first coat dries, repeat with the second coat. Brennan always does the trim and paint cuts because he used to work for a painter in college, so he's a lot faster and better at it than I am. I get to do the easy rolling part.
After cutting, you can finally start the fun part, which is rolling. Roll two coats of paint with a large paint roller. Okay, it's time to paint our main bedroom wall black to create an accent wall. Although I'm a little bit nervous because I've never painted a wall black before, I'm super excited because I think it's gonna look really great, especially against our three other walls that we painted white. It was so hard to pick a black paint color. It reminds me of picking a white paint color. <laughs> they are so similar yet so different. In the end though, after testing out several different samples, I decided on Black Panther by Benjamin Moore it had the softest hue to it and it kind of has a little bit of charcoal mixed in with the black so it seems like a really cozy color and i'm super excited to put it up on the wall so let's get started for painting the black accent wall we use the same steps as the white walls except you really have to be precise with the cuts using black paint and also use painter's tape if you can't cut with a really steady hand I was so excited after the first coat went up and I couldn't wait to add a second coat of the black paint. After painting, we got started on making over my old IKEA dresser that I've had since college. It wasn't in the budget to buy a new dresser and I didn't want to build one because of all the drawers involved, so I came up with an IKEA dresser hack to make it more classy looking with trim, knobs, and fresh paint. I'll link below the full dresser hack tutorial video. For the other main furniture pieces in our bedroom, the nightstands and the bed frame, I knew that I wanted to design and build them ourselves so we could save money and get the custom look and finishes that I wanted. I didn't want a matchy matchy bedroom set, instead I wanted pieces that would complement each other. I shared the other week our DIY nightstands video tutorial and how we built them which I'll link below. We made one using premium 2x2s and one out of 2x2 furring boards which cost less to build. I spent a lot of time testing out finishes for them. I really wanted a warm gray brown wood tone to complement the black accent wall. And I splurged on the perfect modern aged brass knobs from Rejuvenation to go with them. I absolutely love how they turned out and they have become one of my favorite DIY build projects. I love that we have matching wood nightstands now. After building our DIY nightstands, we tackled one of our largest DIY building projects ever, a DIY king bed frame. I will be sharing the step-by-step -step video tutorial for this bed next week, but we built it for less than $200 out of plywood and framing lumber, along with some pretty molding. I 
I painted the bed frame in ivory white by Benjamin Moore, which is a really soft, creamy white, to contrast against the charcoal black wall. I'm really excited because now it's time to move our old furniture out of our bedroom that we don't need anymore and bring in our new pieces that we built. And I'm super excited to get everything in place because once that happens, we can start decorating, which is really exciting. I'm not totally sure of the layout of this bedroom. I do know for sure where the bed's gonna go against our accent wall and the nightstands on both sides of the bed. But for the other pieces, I think we're gonna have to play around with the layout to see where things fit and what makes sense functionally. So let's get started with that. We've removed our old nightstands and console table from the bedroom. After getting the dresser in place, we tried to figure out the best spot for my DIY makeup vanity. After trying a few options out, it worked best under the window in the little nook in our bedroom. Once the furniture was in place, we moved on to the lighting. Part of opening the space up more and giving it an updated feel was taking down the old outdated ceiling fan and replacing it with a modern brass semi-flush mount light with a vintage light bulb. I didn't want to draw a lot of attention to the popcorn ceiling, so I kept the fixture simple but modern. For our nightstands, I found the cutest lamps at Target Online. They were from the new Studio McGee line, but all of the reviews said that the lampshade was too big for the lamp holder and covered part of the brass part on it. I decided to just order them anyway, but when I received them in the mail, I had the same issue and my lampshade was a bit too big covering the brass area. To fix it, one reviewer tried a smaller lampshade and another reviewer said that they used a taller lamp harp. Well, I had no idea what a lamp harp was, so I googled it and I learned that it's the hardware that holds the lampshade up on the lamp holder. I tried both of those options out and I ended up going with the taller lamp harp. I found one in the same color as the lamp harp that came with the lamp and it was about an inch taller and it worked great and I love how they turned out on both of the nightstands. For our window, we took the old blinds down and added bamboo Roman shades to add more warmth and texture to the space. They're my favorite shades to add to any room. For the curtains, I went with the IKEA Ripta curtains, which look like white linen, but are really affordable compared to real linen. All right, we're about to hang our curtains, and when it comes to hanging curtains, you want to hang them as high as possible and have the bottoms of them kiss the floor. My IKEA curtains were 98 inches long, but my ceilings are only 96 inches high. Ideally, you'd want to have your curtains hemmed so that they're the perfect length, but I didn't have time to do that. <laughs> so I washed them instead and put them in the dryer to shrink them, which ended up working really well. They ended up shrinking to about 94 inches, which I think will work well. I'm going to hang them on my curtain rings from my curtain rod and then just hold it in place on the wall to see exactly where I need them to be. And then we can mark the location of the hardware and then drill things into place. This works really well with two people, so Brandon's going to help me tackle this project. how the curtains were hanging, so I ended up adding some pinch pleating hardware to the back of them to make them hang better. Before I start decorating the space with pretty decor, I want to declutter any items that aren't pretty or stress me out. My old jewelry box is one of those items. 
I bought this jewelry organizer from Amazon so that I could put all of my jewelry in it and hang it from a command hook in my closet on the wall and that way it would be out of sight and I can easily see things better that I have and I'm also going to hang my DIY necklace holder that I made a few years ago above it on the closet wall as well. I really want the space to feel light and airy with tons of natural light. Mirrors are a great way to do this. I had this round gold mirror in storage and found the perfect spot for it by the window. Plus the brass finish and round modern shape goes great with the room. For my old cheap full length mirror, another piece I've had since college, <laughs> I wanted to give it a makeover and make it look like a nicer, more expensive piece of decor to fit in with the room makeover. I had some scrap 2x4s on hand and thought it would look cool to frame the mirror out with them and paint it all one color. I cut the 2x4s with 45 degree angle ends and joined them together using wood glue and 2 inch brad nails. Then I used liquid nails to attach the mirror to the 2x4 frame and left some heavy bocce balls sitting on top of the frame while the liquid nails dried to the wood. Finally, after all the glue dried, I primed and painted the 2x4s in mirror frame. I used aged gray chalk paint to make it look like one cohesive custom piece. Finally, I hung the full length mirror on the wall so it wasn't sitting on the floor anymore. Above the bed, I really wanted to do an abstract painting in a long gold vintage frame, but I didn't have time to go thrifting for the perfect frame. So I made a vintage looking DIY poster frame instead out of wood. I found the beautiful artwork for the frame at Juniper Print Home. I'll link my tutorial video for the frame and the artwork I used below. Before we could add our bedding and decor, we needed to put our new rug in place. I realized we should have put it down first before moving our bed into place. Oh well, we made it work, we just had to clear everything off the bed. We layered our rug over the carpet for a finished pretty look and to make the bedroom more cozy feeling. For the bedding, I used mostly neutral colors and cozy textures so that I can have fun with changing up the throw pillows throughout the year with different patterns and colors. Also, I think the neutral bedding will work well with different art above the bed throughout the year as well. For my DIY makeup vanity, I added a cute little brass vanity mirror, along with some fresh flowers and other items I use daily. For my dresser, I added a pretty leaf art print I found on Etsy in a natural wood frame. I also added a pretty glass jar and a faux green plant. For our nightstands, I kept things really simple with fresh flowers and a candle on my side. And on Brandon's side, I added a stylish clock along with our new lamps and baskets for storage on each of the nightstand shelves. Finally, I used a set of square frames that I had already and added family photos in them to hang on the wall across from our bed. It was the perfect spot for them so we can look at them when we're in bed. Okay, it's finally time for the final rodeo.
I love how our bedroom makeover turned out. I love having real wood furniture and a pretty decorated space and our bed finally off the floor. <laughs> It's also just become one of our new favorite hangout spaces. Our dog, Chance, especially loves the bed. Let me know what you think of this room makeover down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up as well. And please subscribe to my channel for more fun room makeovers and DIY videos. Also, you can always follow me on Instagram for sneak peeks of my latest projects. Thanks again for stopping by and watching.